Guys, this tutorial is in continuation with the earlier one where I talked about how Spring MVC automatically binds HTML form data which is submitted by the user on the browser with the corresponding properties of the student object. If you observe here, up till now I showed you this auto data binding feature working with all properties present in the student class having built-in types like string, long, date, error list. Now question is, can you use this feature for a property which is present in the student class having a user defined type? All right, let me explain you this way what I'm really talking about. What if I add a new class in the project with the name address having these properties, country, city, street, and pin code along with getters and setters methods. And in the student class, I would add a new property with the name student address, which is having address as its type along with its getters and setters methods. Now question is, can you use the auto data binding feature which is provided by Spring MVC for this property as well, which is having a user defined type that is address? And the answer is yes. Let me make all necessary changes in the admission form.jsp file and admission success.jsp file related to this property and later I'll explain everything to you in detail. Cool. So I'm done with making all necessary changes in admission form.jsp file and admission success.jsp file related to this property which I just added in the student class. Now let's understand in detail what I've really added in these two files. Here in the admission form.jsp file, I've added four new form elements, country, city, street, and pin code with input type as text. Guys, now this is an important thing to learn over here. Spring MVC says, if you want me to automatically bind a particular form elements value with the corresponding property of student class having a user defined type. The way we have student address property over here having address as its type. Then you mention the form elements name in the JSP file with this property name dot the corresponding property of its type. And that's why you are seeing here me writing student address dot country, student address dot city, student address dot street and student address dot pin code. So here when the user would submit this form on the browser, Spring MVC will automatically bind this student address dot country form elements value with the country property of this student address property. Similarly, Spring MVC will automatically bind this student address dot city form elements value with city property of student address property. And likewise, it will bind these all other form elements values with the corresponding properties of student address property. I hope you got the point. And here in the admission success.jsp file, I've added this code snippet so as to display the user entered values for country, city, street, pin code form elements, along with other form elements values on the response web page after user submits admission form on the browser. Guys, let me show you this application working on the browser and Consequently, I'll explain more about the changes which I've just made in this project. Now, after all these changes, when a user would type this URL on the browser and hits enter, my application will send this web page as a response back. Let's say the user provides these values into these form elements. Now, when the user would click on this submit button, the request will reach to this request handler method. And here, this model attribute annotation would automatically bind all these form elements values 
with the corresponding properties of this student object. And immediately after this auto data binding task, Spring MVC would make a call to admission success.jsp file in order to produce the final response using this code snippet. Let me submit this form and show you this working. Cool. My application sent this web page as a response displaying all user entered values in the HTML form, including the property values for student address, that is country, city, street, and pin code. As I just showed you how you can use Spring MVC's provided auto data binding feature with a user defined type. Now let's proceed further and talk about one of the most important and fundamental concepts related to data binding and that is the concept of binding errors. Guys, in all of my previous Spring MVC tutorials, I've laid stress on one point that the auto data binding feature which is provided by Spring MVC is like a magic to us. Developers kind of write less code and do more things with the help of this feature. But you know, sometimes due to some XYZ reasons, Spring MVC just fails to bind the data which is coming all along with the incoming request with the intended property or properties of the corresponding object. Let me show you with an example of what really I'm talking about here. For this student mobile form element, what if I provide here some value other than a number? Say I provide here a value A, B, C, D and click on submit button. Oops, it just failed. For this case, my application sent an error web page, which is just displaying me this description of the error occurred on the server. The request sent by the client was syntactically incorrect. The reason for this application failure is very simple and clear. Here I provided ABCD as the value for student mobile form element. And when I submitted the form, Spring MVC tried performing auto data mining task. And while performing this task, it tried converting ABCD value for student mobile form element into the type long. And it cannot do so because you cannot convert a null number into a long type and because of that reason sake when i submitted the form it just threw this error web page guys i just showed you a very simple use case for which spring mvc failed while performing the data binding task and threw this error web page likewise there could be many other reasons for data binding failure at runtime so question is how developers should deal with such a situation when any data binding related error occurs on the server. The most common pattern which developers follow to deal with such a situation is they return back the same HTML form to the client along with the complete description of data binding errors so that the user would refill the HTML form with all correct values and resubmit the HTML form back to the Spring MVC application. So now question is how we'll achieve such a kind of pattern in this project. Spring MVC says, hey developers, I have something called as binding result. And if you place the binding result on the method argument for this request handler method like this, that is immediately after model attribute annotation, the way I placed here, then I would catch all binding related errors appropriately for you and put all of them into this result reference. Spring MVC says in addition to using binding result the way I placed over here, you add this code snippet in this request handler method, which is simply returning back the same HTML form that is admission form.jsb file back to the client as a response if any data binding related error occurs on the server. There is one more change which we have to make in the admission form.jsp file. Here, you add the errors tag which is provided by Spring MVC the way I have used over here. Its job is to simply display the complete information about the binding related errors which would occur on the server to the client. In order to use this errors tag which is provided by Spring MVC, 
you got to add this statement on top of this web page that is you need to include this tag library the way i've included here I'll do one thing, I'll quickly show you this application working on the browser with all these modifications which are made in this application. And then I would explain the complete workflow once again for all the changes which I've just made. Now after all these modifications, if I would submit the same form for which I've entered here, wrong value for student mobile, that is a non-number value, what would happen? Let's check it out. Cool. This time my application sent the same HTML form back because of this code snippet that I've added over here. And because of this errors tag which I placed over here on top of this JSP file, my application sent here the complete description of binding related error which occurred on the server for this form. Guys, here in this tutorial, I just meant to introduce you to the concept of binding result and how you would send the same HTML form back to the client at the time of any binding related error which would occur on the server. I'll talk more on binding result and related concepts when I would talk on form validation features provided by Spring MVC. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how developers can have more control over auto data binding feature which is provided by Spring MVC. Guys, a big thank you for liking all of my tutorials on Spring MVC series. If you have any queries or feedback, please provide them below the video or simply write to me on this email ID for all of your queries. Please hit the like button if you really like the video and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Con2Series and I am going to catch you in my next tutorial.